You join me on a bit of a random one today. We're at Jeremy Clarkson's farm in Chipping Norton, and we're actually here to film at the Diddley Squat Farm Shop for Food Tribe, a video with Jeremy. But I thought while we're here, let's take advantage of the situation and film with potentially his most prized possession, his Alfa Romeo GTV6. Now, hopefully I'm gonna be able to drive it and take a look at it and see what makes it so special. So we are here for the farm shop and you'll be able to see that video on Food Tribe but we've got both Jeremy's cars down here. I say both, he's got the Excellent, he's got the Alpha and then he's got a couple of Range Rovers. He's got a Vogue that he kicks away the farm on and then one I think he's got for London. But these are his two official cars. What a two car garage. People expect him to have Ferraris, 4GTs, all the supercars he had back in the Top Gear days. People think he may have kept up that, maybe he's got a new 4GT but no. He gets so many press cars and drives so many cars on the job that he just doesn't need to do that. So these are his two babies. Even when covered in farm dust, this is still one of the prettiest cars ever made. What a thing. It may not be prancing through the highlands of Scotland, but even down at Diddley Squat, it's a serious looker. I had a GTV of my own, one of the much later ones that met a bit of a sticky end. Even my later car had constant problems, so I imagine Jeremy has had to sink some extra cash into it since the Grand Tour episode aired. But who cares really, when it looks this good and sounds even better. This is a slightly surreal position to be in. I am sitting in JC's Alfa Romeo GTV. I watched the Grand Tour episode last night up in Scotland and now I get to drive it. Not too bad. <laughs> You join me about two hours later and it hasn't exactly gone to plan. I got permission to drive this car from Jeremy's girlfriend and I did. I drove it down to the farm shop to go film down there. But it turns out I did not have permission from Jeremy himself. He is of the mindset that he's very much the only person that drives this car and no one else. So sorry Jeremy, hands up, didn't mean any harm. But we have the car now, so let's take a look around it. It is covered in crap but it's a farm car we're on an active farm right now so it's going to be a bit mucky but yeah let's look around this grand tour legend you guys will probably remember from the episode that jeremy got this from an 83 year old man who was the only owner before jeremy and he got it at 26,000 miles and it's on 27,500. So if you include that Scotland road trip, he's probably not done that much mileage in and around here. If you remember, he got the car for 10 grand. And at the end of the episode, he revealed he'd spent eight grand fixing everything that was wrong with it, especially the prop shaft. One thing you would expect on a car of this age is some rust, especially in the arches and the sills, but it looks completely clean. For a 25, or should I say 35 year old car, he's done all right inside is just as clean as the outside. The guy that owned this car before Jeremy must have really enjoyed looking after this car. It is pretty much pristine inside, all original. It looks fantastic. Now, classic Italian sports car. The steering wheel feels like it's pointing to the ceiling. You're almost like a bus driver driving it. The pedals are all over the place. And when I drove it, I didn't move Jeremy's seat. It's as far back as it can go for his six foot five frame. So I was kind of tiptoeing all the pedals, but I didn't want to move it. One of the things this car is most famous for is its dodgy gearbox, especially trying to engage second and third gear. It's very tricky, but I was told by Jeremy's girlfriend, if you just take it slowly, slot it in, you'll be absolutely fine. Apparently, Jeremy crunches it every single time. I'm guessing that's to be expected. What this car is really about is this it's 2.5 liter v6 now jeremy managed to get over the sound of this car in that episode amazingly up in scotland it is one of the smoothest engines you will ever come across i got it to maybe 4000 rpm in third gear on the way down to the shop didn't go crazy with it but my god it's so smooth and just it's almost like a five cylinder an inline five it warbles it's not actually as pretty as the later Alpha V6s. The Busso V6s had uh, Krobe exhaust manifolds and it was transverse and it was just such a pretty engine. This isn't quite on par with that, but it more than makes up for it 
with the sound. I can understand exactly why Jeremy bought this car. He's an engine guy. He goes for cars with engines that are quirky, have some cool history or just sound amazing. It's a similar reason to why I bought my Mondeo ST, although on a much more affordable scale. That was for its V6, and when a car has an engine like this, you can drop down a gear, give it some revs, and it'll put a bigger smile on your face than some supercars will. Clarkson once said that the one car he most regretted selling when he was younger was a GTV6, so I think he put together that Scottish Grand Tour special so that he could have an excuse to buy one of these cars again. And let's hope he keeps this car for many, many years to come.